already told you, can't go on like this. Red lips and kisses, you got me coming for you. Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. So this is the first video that is not a vlog that I'm doing at the shop, the new shop. So first I'm gonna start off by thanking you guys. We just hit 6,000 subscribers. At this time last year, we're probably at like 600, probably not even that much. So we've grown a lot over the past year and it's all thanks to you guys. And I know I haven't been uploading much for the past two months, but all that's about to change. We're about to be back to the normal uploads with vlogs and DIYs, product reviews and everything. And I've got a lot of stuff in store for you guys. So today we're gonna to be working on this 2001 BMW 330 convertible engine. Uh, pretty much what happened to the car was the car had overheated. So on this engine, the heads and all that stuff, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. There's no compression in most of the cylinders. It wouldn't even turn on. And the head gasket is definitely gone. The heads might be warped and all that. We're, gonna all, we're all gonna find that out when we start taking all this apart. So this is gonna be a series of videos I'm going to be taking apart slowly so I can explain everything while I'm taking everything apart. So I've already removed a few things off of this engine. Uh, well, first of all, I already removed it out of the car as you can tell. The flex plate has been removed, the headers have been removed, the intake boots have been removed, the throttle body and all that stuff is still there. Uh, all the front end stuff is still there like the pulleys, the AC compressor, power steering and all that stuff is still there. Valve covers are still on there. I have removed two ignition coils and the spark plugs for both of those cylinders. Uh, but everything else is still intact and I'll be showing all the bolts and stuff So if you guys are working on your car and you like lost a bolt or something You can use this as a reference to see what bolt goes where and if you guys have any questions Even whatever I don't cover feel free to ask and I can go ahead and like make a little short video on that if I need to So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the front of the engine as you can see We still have the thermostat and all that intact the lower radiator hose and the upper radiator hose So the lower is on this side upper ones on this side both of those have been removed. The belts are still on. This is the AC belt right here. This is the AC compressor. A quick way to check if your AC compressor is seized is by turning this. When the AC is cut on, the compressor will actually engage this pulley as well, and this will turn with this pulley. And if it was stuck, if it wasn't moving, then your AC is not gonna work. A common problem that usually occurs is the wire that goes right here, which tells the AC compressor uh, clutch to engage, is the wire right here. So if the wire is messed up, it's like a little connector that goes in here, just pushes in. If that's messed up, that could also be a reason why you don't have AC. And first, I mean, first thing you would want to check is the refrigerant levels and all that. We'll get into that later. So let's continue with this. Here's the thermostat right here. This is the connector for the thermostat. Then we have uh, the camshaft sensor here. Then we have the Vanos unit right here. This is the Vanos oil line. We have the oil filter housing. This is where you change your oil filter and there's an O-ring that goes on this little cap. We have the power steering uh, fluid reservoir. Then we have a pulley right here, the water pump pulley and the water pump behind it. Then we have another, this is the tensioner assembly and then the pulley right there. And this right here is the alternator. And then on the bottom is the power steering. So the power steering pulley, the water pump pulley, you can replace those if they crack or anything like that when you're replacing the pump or water pump, whatever and then the pump is right behind it, which I'll show you how to take that off as well. Now right here is where you would actually lift the engine from. This is one of the engine lifting points. The other one is on the back of the engine, which I'll show you when we get there. This right here is the valve cover, and this hose right here is a vacuum hose that goes to the CCV, which is the crankcase ventilation system. Then we have the whole intake manifold here. This is the fuel rail, and the injectors are attached to the fuel rail, and this is the injector harness which attaches all the electrical connectors to the fuel rail. Now on this side, uh, the vanity covers have been removed as you can tell, and we have the spark plugs that go inside here, and the ignition coils on top, and then as you can see these four are still there, and you have the actual connectors right here, and this is the actual harness that goes to the DME, so this, across, this goes across the engine bay into the compartment where the DME is at, and this is the actual uh, positive terminal that goes to the starter and the alternator and this goes all the way across onto the passenger side for the US models and it attaches to the little positive terminal in your engine bay. So now let's go to the back. So as you can see over here I've already removed the flex plate. This is where your transmission would attach and that's the other section where you can hoist the engine from. 
And then this is one of the seals right here. This is the rear main seal. And then you have the oil pan. This is the bottom of the oil pan. And you have a starter which attaches to the flex plate and to the transmission as well. And then from the back over here, you can see all the other sensors for the intake manifold. Here are the vacuum lines that always break, like here's one broken one. So these vacuum lines always are rotten and then they break. That's just what happens with rubber. And we have another vacuum canister. Most, uh, most of the pre-facelift models have this. After the pre-facelift, they usually got rid of them. There might still be like the beginning years of the facelift that might still have it. And we'll keep going this way. Now here's the throttle body. You'll usually have a boot right here. This is the idle control valve right here, right on top of the throttle body. And you can clean both of these with like intake, uh, intake cleaner or whatever, or throttle body cleaner. And this is where the detail valve would go, which has also been removed. And this actually goes to the brake booster. This little hose right here. There's also vacuum leaks that occur at this little joint. So this is another spot for vacuum leaks. And then as I was saying about the hoses in the back, there's also, there should be caps on any vacuum ports that are not being used. On this one, the caps have already been removed. And this actually goes to the intake boot. And there's a little F connector, this is the connector. And there's a little hole on the intake boot that this attaches to. So now this is the other engine mount location. This is the one that goes on the driver's side. Then we have a coolant passage going through here. These coolant hoses tend to leak a lot. So whenever I, whenever I take off the intake manifold, I suggest uh, always doing all of the plastic hoses. They're hard plastic hoses behind and underneath the intake manifold. So you should get those replaced. This is the oil dipstick. And this is the tube that attaches to the oil pan right down here. And then we have this little hose that attaches to the CCV. This one also tends to break and it might even cause oil leaks. So I would check over here if you have a big oil leak just dripping down the side of the oil pan. The O-ring that goes in here also can leak if this has been played with. This is like the actual harness box that has most of the harnesses on the driver's side of the engine. And then this also attaches to the DME with these connectors. And lastly on this side we have the purge valve which always, if something's wrong with the purge valve, you'll have an emissions related code, uh, like a P0455 or something like that. And it could, it could just be that it's unplugged, there's dirt in the connector, or the hose that attaches to the back of the intake is messed up, which is a hard plastic, and then there's a little rubber section that joins it on the intake manifold and on the purge valve itself. And then you have this, uh, another hose that's coming off of the actual engine bay itself that plugs into the bottom of this purge valve. And the last thing we have are the headers, which are not here, as you can see. And the studs, some of the studs will come off when you're taking off the header bolts. Some of them will stay stuck on here. And as you can see, these are really, really rusted. So we're gonna try to get these out, and I'll show you guys how to do that as well. So this is what you would be doing if you were gonna be replacing your headers or replacing your catalytic converters or whatever. You would have to take these off and then replace them or do whatever you're doing. This is a passenger side engine mount arm. And then here's the back of the AC compressor. And this is the actual secondary air pump valve attaches right here. Uh, the valve itself is missing, but attached right here, here's the gasket for it. And that valve, one of the vacuum lines goes all the way to the back of the intake manifold, and the other one attaches to the actual secondary air pump. Once again, if you have a facelift model, the O3 and up, I, I believe, the valve is different, so they won't have an intake uh, a vacuum line running to the back of the intake manifold, and they'll have a different style pump. So just cross-reference what you have and what you see here if you're using this as a guide for anything before you go ahead and dive in. All right, so that's gonna be it for the first part of the engine disassembly series. All we did today was overview of the whole engine, what goes where. That way, once I start taking stuff off, if you need to see what, what went where, you can just go back to this video as a reference. And the next video, I'll be actually taking stuff off and I'll try to get that post it up as soon as possible as well, that way you guys can go ahead and keep following along. All right, so stay tuned for the next video where you will actually see some action in terms of taking stuff off. And I'll see you guys on the next video.